Hi there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Uh, this is part three of my series on boxers. Uh, part one I did the proportions where I turned the box with a rather large lid compared to a small base. Uh, part two is where I, con the main part of the topic was on grain orientation and I turned this one again probably pitched up here where rather than the grain running on the spindle way was on side grain like you have with a bowl uh, at the same time because the wood was wet I then turned also added into there rough turning um, so this part part three I decided I would do a finished turning on a rough turning and I produced this lovely little box and I've got to say, um, it is, I'm over the moon with this one. This is the first piece of oak I have had where it is such a smooth finish, it is unbelievable. And basically what I did, I started off with a blank, or a, a rough turn piece, very, very similar to this in size. Um, it had been sat here in the workshop just like this for probably about four six weeks and this morning I basically ran it through the microwave a few times 10-15 seconds a time and it only lost about another two or three grams um, so but overall it lost a good 25% of its weight so put it on the lathe finished it off and sanded it at 600 uh, just sanding sealer and wood wax 22 and like I say I've never had a piece of oak come up so smooth. Um, all of my other oak, perhaps it's because it's a little bit wet still, um, just doesn't, the, the grain, it seems to be very prominent on the touch. Whereas this, you just wouldn't, you can't even really hardly feel it. Um, it's come up that smooth. So as, as you'll see in the video following in a moment, um, after I put it in the microwave, it actually quite distorted a fair bit. So, video to follow now uh, of me just finishing this off. So, I have here a rough turned box that I did 28th of March. So, it's had three to four weeks sat here like it is in the workshop. And until this morning, it was perfectly round and it had gone down to about 70 grams from 95. So, it's lost what 25% of its weight. And what I did, I basically gave it a bit of a blast in the microwave, 10-15 uh, seconds at a time. So that's the lid and the chuck. And as you can see, it's fairly distorted. Um, and I'm just going to face this front off and then just finish off the inside there. That's sanded to 600 and that has come up absolutely lovely. So I'm just going to give it a coat of sanding sealer and I shall knock it back probably with the 600. And give it a coat of wax. So that's absolutely lovely. So that's a two coats of wood wax 22 now. So the idea is to get this in the chuck and take the sides down so I can create a jam chuck for this. So the basin in the chuck and I know just my jam chuck on there, but I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna true up this outside edge a little bit just with the skew.
So I've got the lead mounted on now and just brought the tower stock up for a bit of support just so it doesn't, doesn't spin off. Uh, my inner part here goes to about 10 mil. These walls are currently about 6 mil thick so they will go a little bit thinner when I just take the inside out so I need to take the top off literally where it ends on this top lip here. So I'm just going to use the skill again just to finish off this outside edge. is now done and I will just sand this down uh, and I'll come back in a sec when I do the sanding sealer just so you can see what it's looked like when, when it goes on there to show the grain. So sanded to 600 same as the inside of the lid and I've got to say I don't think I've ever had I'm sure this is oak never had a piece of oak come up so smooth and even the edge on here has such a crisp, sharp edge. Uh, it's obviously, I think, a lot of it because it's just fully dried properly. That has come up absolutely lovely. So I'm going to let that dry and I shall come back when I've buff up the wax. So that's been sanded inside now to 600 and I've got to say any tear out that was there has just about literally all gone. I have the minutest little bit I think on the edge here somewhere but it really is a case of it's quite a job to try and find it. So just give this a coat of sanding sealer again. Had two coats of wood wax 22 so I'm now going to take this off the chuck create a jam chuck and then take this bottom off uh, just so you can see what it's like and that has come out absolutely lovely And that is one completed box. And if we just find the grain. Well, I've got to say, I've never had a piece of oak come up so well as a finish. Uh, as far as tear out I mean you've really really got to look closely for any sign of tear out um, even <clears throat> even on the top here and the bottom it's so so smooth I mean you can just about feel a little bit of texture on the base and the only visible piece of tear out I can say is in the lid here on the rim where I'd use the scraper uh, it's actually left one or two little marks um, but again you've really really got to look hard to find them and I've got to say 
with rough turning I buy a lot of wood which is really firewood from the local mill as off cuts and stuff like that and that's precisely where this came from and my way of thinking if you can turn a piece of firewood which is wet into something like that it's worthwhile doing all the time. I mean when you consider the price of a blank I mean there's an oak spindle there which is probably I mean they've scribbled out the price because it was a Christmas present a couple of three pounds and there's an ash spindle there again a couple of three pounds uh, the piece of wood that come from bearing in mind I I mean you've probably seen it on previous videos I have a bag which is about or a sack which is about that size full of wood which cost me three pounds so if I had usable pieces of wood I could probably make 50 of those out, out of that um, for three pounds on the wood so certainly rough turning and wet turning is something that really everybody should consider I know that getting hold of green wood and stuff like that is not always accessible but I'm sure that there's always chances that a lot of people have got to pick up the green wood and not really know what to do with it like I say you can even the small off cuts and stuff like that and here's another piece I've got which was an off cut from when I did some rough turning on some bowls um, just a few weeks ago I mean that's still probably a little bit wet I mean I've got a crack through there um, but I have this side usable and I will cut that off and I will probably rough turn another box blank out of that and again because it's drying fairly well even here in the workshop I can leave that in the workshop and it will f finish up going like that one and then into that one so I think rough turning boxes is certainly a big element of the series. Um, like I say, not everybody will have green wood, but there is a, I, I suspect there's a big majority of wood turners who live in an area, uh, who live more in a more of a rural area uh, where they have access to green timber. And again, check out, search on, on Google, find out your local sawmills, uh, they will often sell off cuts of scrap and especially if they are a sawmill where they're buying or getting in the raw timber which is wet, freshly chopped down within a few days and they'll probably be turning it into things like fence posts and fences and stuff like that, they will have lots of off cuts and they will be literally almost giving it away like I, I get the wood. So if this is your first time here please do subscribe. I put up regular videos and at least you'll that way you'll get notified every time they go up. For my existing subscribers, again, a big, big thank you. I hope you're enjoying the, the little mini-series on boxes. Um, it's certainly appreciated you keep coming back all the time. And I'd appreciate it if everybody could hit the share button, hit the like button, and please leave a comment below. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next project video. Thanks a lot. Bye.